Hey guys, it's Michelle here with My Cup of America, and I am so excited and honored to have Cliff and Haley from Mernickel Custom Holsters out of Pampa, Texas. You guys, thank you so much for taking some time to jump on this call with me and share with me and our viewers and our listeners more about what you do. So we were just talking a little bit before. Happy to be here. Absolutely. So we were talking a little bit before we started recording. It's Pampa, Texas, but people think you're in Tampa, Florida. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially with a, a little bit of twang in your in our dialect from Texas, um, because we're so close to Miami, Florida, but it's pronounced Miami, Isn't but spelled that- the same. So Tampa and Miami, everybody assumes we're in Florida. <laughs> wow, that's funny. <laughs> funny how that happens. So I was looking around on your website, and you guys have been in business for a long time. Yeah, the yeah. company was founded by Bob Marnicle in 1974. Wow. So how did how did it get started? How did it come to be? And where did you guys come into the picture? Well, Bob, Bob started by making belts in his garage uh, in Canada. He's actually from Canada. And um, he started just making belts for friends. And then he had a, a friend of his that wanted to show him about World Fast Draw and how you know, it was a new upcoming sport back in the day and it was fun. And Bob was like, oh man, I got to figure out how to do this. And he made his first world fast draw holster. And then from there, you know, somebody saw it and was like, can you make me one? And then it just, you know, it just kind of took off. That is so cool. So how long have you been with the company? Uh, we've been in the company for three years now. Okay. So what is, what is your guys's role, Haley? What, what is your role in the company? So I, I kind of have a lot of roles. (laughs) Um, So I deal mainly with all of our dealers. Um, So all of our big name gun companies that um, sell our holsters. So Ruger, Dillon, um, and a couple others. Colt is one of them. Um, It's probably our newest one. Um, So I deal a lot with all of them. And I also run all of our concealed carry line. Um, I do all of the building and the making. And then I also kind of am like a the overhead shop manager, if you will, um, just to kind of make sure that things stay flowing throughout the throughout the company. I always I always tell people it's very demasculating to have the CEO of Colt call the company and ask for Haley. <laughs> well, you know she's doing a good job then. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> so Cliff, how did you come into this business? Well, so back in 2012, um, me and Haley. So when I retired, I did uh, 23 years in the army, and when I retired. Um, a retired army infantry guy and a 16 year old girl did not mess very well at all. <laughs> um, and we just didn't it was just too different I was deployed a lot back then and so I missed a lot of her growing up and um, we just were constantly at odds with each other and one day my wife set us down and she was like hey you two can fit this figure it out I don't know what you're gonna have to do but you got to figure it out <laughs> so we decided to get a hobby together and try and rekindle our relationship and Haley found um cowboy shooting a uh, video of cowboy shooting and so we made some phone phone calls up in Colorado to find out the closest club and and we went out there and that's how we got love into it the, first yeah, sight <laughs> it was I mean we had cool. you know, the single action shooting society is the only reason that we're into this business um and then the way that we got making holsters, I mean, once we started doing it, my wife did it, my other daughter did it. And, and so we had five people that were, were shooting SAS. And uh, in April of 2012, we were on our way to, she had started shooting in March of 2012. Mm-hmm. In May of 2012, we went to the Colorado State Championship. And oh, wow. so we were driving up there and I was kind of joking with her. And I said, if you win your category, I will buy you a custom set of holsters as an easy bet. She only been shooting for two months, you know, uh, $750 later. He learned to not make bets with me. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, man, I can't afford this for every member of my family. I got to learn how to make leather. And that's how I got started really. Wow. That is an awesome story. So it's grown then into a family business. Yes. Yeah. So I, so SAS is like a huge, huge part of our lives. It, it, it did so much for us, including when I went to college, um, I actually am a two-time recipient of the SAS scholarship, which helped put me through college. And I actually ended up graduating. I graduated with two degrees, one in art and one in psychology. Um, 
Um, and then after that, I became a therapist for children with autism when I graduated. Um, so that's actually where I was working. Yeah. So I was working um, with children with autism when we found the company. Um, and I kind of, I don't know, we, we met, we had gone to end a trail, which is the world championships for SAS or single action shooting society. It's the world championships. And we went there because we go every year and we had um, met Bob and we were just talking and we decided to kind of take a leap of faith and we both quit our jobs and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, we got this. <laughs> like, well, let's do it. Let's start a new adventure together. So, <laughs> so what is, what is some of the struggles being father and daughter? to be in your position. You know, so honestly, and the truth of it is our struggles as father and daughter happened so early on that as a business wise, we don't, really we have, don't any. have any. We, I um, mean, we pretty much get along. Yeah. We haven't had any, we talk through, through all of our issues. The one rule that we both have for each other is it's never just a no. Right. So if I say, Haley, you should cut this holster or design it to go this way or if she says hey dad I think you should redo this holster because it would fit better this way we're not allowed to just say no to explain why we have to explain why it won't work or we'll do a trial I, I she thinks one way I think another and, and so our answer is always well let's make one out of scrap leather and see if it works and then go from there and right. so it's it's made really it's made a lot of tension not be yeah. there so it's yeah, good. those are some good foundations to have. I think a lot of times people get into business with family members and it just, it can make or break you, you know? And I think yeah. Yeah. Those, okay, you good ground about? rules starting out um, has definitely helped making you, know, you successful. So um, I was looking on your website and I see that you guys um, have partnered up with the Thin Blue Line. Yes. So well, that's, that's a brand new product. <laughs> it, it, is, it is. So, so a, a little backstory on the thin blue line. So when I retired from the army, um, like I said, I did 22 years in the infantry and all, you know, you have to find another job. You have to right. go work somewhere else after the retirement, military retirement, the medical's great, but <laughs> the money's not mm -hmm. great. Right. And uh, so I went to work in law enforcement. Um, there was uh, USA Jobs was hiring and they had federal law enforcement officers. And so I was like, I don't know, I'd like to do that. I think the humanitarian piece of that really appeases to my nature. Um, and it's unfortunate because such a small part of being in law enforcement is humanitarian. <laughs> right. it's, it's usually the bad stuff that you get to see all the time. And so as a retiree, um, I didn't do it well. Um, to be a cop, you have to go from zero to 100 back to zero instantly. And once I was at 100, I didn't go back to zero. And so my wife was like, all right, well, this is, you're stressed out more now than you ever were when you were in the service, even when you come home from deployment. And so, um, but I had so much respect for what they do and being able to do it in just that five short year span. I mean, I just absolutely loved it. So um, after the Marnacle thing was running for a while and, and here in the company, I have a friend of mine, uh, his name is Frosty McWilliams, and he is a retired sheriff's department uh, up in Weber, Weber, Weber County, County, Utah. And so he was here helping me do some stuff from the holsters and stuff. And we sat down and started talking and I had blue thread and black holsters. And so I was sewing one for somebody. And then he was like, that'd be cool if you put like a thin blue line on it. Yeah. And it, and, and then right then we were like, oh my God. <laughs> so we did, we made a bunch of them. Um, we bought the website, the official thinblueline.com and it links to Marnival's page and then mm -hmm. offer it. And it took off the minute we started advertising it, it absolutely took off. And it's become one of our most popular it is products. Because it, it, for me, it works two ways. For one, if a law enforcement guy wants to wear it and is off duty, that's fine. A lot of cops don't like being recognized in that but it's a subtle way for you to wear a, a duty holster, um, so to speak. But the other thing is in, in the world that we live in right now, it's almost too hard for somebody to say thank you to law enforcement in, right. in a public environment. This thin blue line allows you to do that without ever having to say a word. You're wearing yeah. a black belt with a thin blue line or, or anything like that. You can support local law enforcement and 10% uh, of our proceeds go to the 
uh, National Police Memorial Fund. That's awesome. Yeah, I um, I used to be a 911 dispatcher um, in Michigan. Oh, okay. So law enforcement is very near and dear to me. And, and one of my best friends um, is Michigan State Police. I, I'm just a total circle of law enforcement. So the same thing, I mean, I get, I get choked up just listening to that because um, there is such a lack of respect for, for our law enforcement. And um, like you said, you know, to, to go and thank them. So, you know, every time we, you know, my husband and I, he's a 26 year critical care paramedic. So it's very close to us. I mean, we worked in it for so long um, that it's just, it's just part of who we are. And um, every year, like, you know, on Facebook, they do where you can do a donation or fundraiser for your birthday. Right. Every year I do it for the Thin Blue Line of Michigan because um, that's where I used to work. So, you know, to be able to support law enforcement like that is just absolutely huge. And I think that that's going to be just explosive for, for your business because once that really gets out into the world, you know, that you are supporting the Thin Blue Line, I mean, that is a whole community. It, it really home. is. Yeah, you're right. It really is. And, and we're excited. Here's, I, I brought one to show you. I don't know how well it will show up. Um, oh, wow. But, but it just, it's very subtle. But for me, it says so much beyond, oh, up more, okay. It just says so much, you know. I mean, it's just, just absolutely gorgeous setup. Um, but this thin blue line right here, like I said, it just speaks mounds of respect, in my opinion, to oh, the law enforcement that? that are out there. And the belt. Yeah, I have, oh yeah, so. And we also we have, have a belt too, yeah, so this, then if somebody like the is. Like the whole system, this is yeah. the, the mag pouch okay. that goes with it. And then the belt is the belt is really cool. I, I love the belt, but this is the it has a thin blue line that goes to the center oh, wow. of the belt. So then even if you don't want to carry, you can still wear the yeah, belt. Yeah, you can order just and, a belt and, and still show your support that way. That is amazing. That is so, so cool. I absolutely love it. So I'm gonna be sending all my friends to you just so you know that. <laughs> yeah, then we welcome it. <laughs> when orders start coming out of Michigan, you know that that's where they came from. <laughs> okay. So tell me your process. I mean, from start to finish, where does, where does the process begin as far as, you know, designing what you make to finishing it? What's what, how do you do that? Oh man, yeah, <laughs> it's wow. a whirlwind. Let me tell you why. <laughs> sometimes it's a, just an accident. Yeah. You know, sometimes we'll just be doing something and then we're like, Oh, that hey, looks cool. Well, that works. <laughs> um, you know, so, so credit to Bob Marnicle for never throwing anything away. We have patterns on patterns on patterns. You <laughs> can't even imagine full floor, six drawer filing cabinets wow. from patterns that he's made for 25, 30 years. And so very rarely mm -hmm. um, do I get somebody that calls and says, hey, I want you to make me a pattern for this type of gun that hasn't already been done or something close enough to it that I can just make the adjustments. Right. Um, so that was a part of the purchase of the company was purchasing this huge grand knowledge of his with all these patterns. Um, but as for for new patterns and stuff, I mean, we'll work with something that we think is new or a new gun that will come out. Yeah. Um, and and then it's always both of us. It's never yeah. just me or it's never just Haley. Every pattern that we have ever made in this company is a collaboration of ideas. And, and it's not just us either. Um, we, we welcome our employees. We have several employees that have created brand new products. Our guitar straps, for instance, was created yeah. by one of our employees. And we, we, you know, we encourage design and ideas yeah. through the company. So we were like, you know what, you make it and we'll put it on the website, see if it sells. And if it does, then, you know, by all means, that's, that's great. So sometimes it's just a, a simple trial phase that we, that we go through. You know, and I think that sometimes we come across things on, by accident. You know, you just don't like, eh, uh, I don't know if people are going to want this, but then it goes crazy. And then right. you know, the other way too, you know, sometimes they, oh, this is going to be the biggest and best and everybody's going to want it. And it and just then it goes nowhere. And yeah. it never sells. I, yep. I'll tell you one of the funny things though, everybody has their leadership style. And in my leadership style is let's try it. Yep. Um, I could tell these guys, no, all the time when they have an idea. No, it won't work. No, it won't fly. No, it's not going to work. But I'm like, well, I'll either show them why we've done it in the past and it didn't work, or I'll be like, let's try it. So uh, one of my employees, Dakota, wanted to make guitar straps. And I was like, well, I think it's a good idea, but we have to make holsters first. And he's so he's a guitarist, obviously. He's in a band. And 
really thought, oh, this is going to be the best thing since sliced bread. People are going to love it. Well, he just wanted one. And, you know, and so because he's excited about working for a lot of companies. So finally, I sat him down and I said, Dakota, I said, you make it. You make it, you market it, you sell it, and we'll build them. But it has to be you, and it can't get in the way of building holsters because that's our main focus. And he said, okay, agreed. Eight months it took him to make one guitar strap to get it to where he could. He was happy with it, and he could sell it. He would come in early, early in the morning or stay late at night to get it done on his own. Wow, that's a great passion. It yeah. is. It is. And in December, we went live with the guitar straps and they took we, off. We sold like six of them the day we launched we them. We did. So that's fantastic. Yeah. It it gives him the same understanding of why you can't just make something and throw it out there. It just doesn't work that way, you know. So yeah, it takes a lot, a lot of thought process. So getting in the leather, I mean, where where do you source that from? And it, does it come in like already ready to go or what's the process? How does that work? So when we get leather in, we order from Herman Oak. So we use genuine Herman Oak leather, which is the highest grade leather that you can use. Um, and we just get a whole cow hide of leather. Um, it's just smooth leather. And then from there, we have um, our machines. And um, I mean, we have gigantic CNC machines that we use and we cut out our leather. We cut out our holsters through that. Um, that's kind of like my baby. <laughs> I don't let anybody else use it because I don't want anyone to to mess Mine. it up. But um, that's kind of like one of my jobs is when the leather comes in, I cut out the holsters and then I distribute the holsters amongst the shop where they need to go in their perspective areas. But yeah, so we, they just, we, we kind of do everything. We just get the, the raw leather and we go from there. So short of taking it off the cow, you guys yep. are the whole process. Yeah. Yep. yep. The so whole process is us. It is. It is. And that we make everything right here in the United States. We don't outsource anything. Um, and part of that to us is very important, especially being a vet. Um, right. I like being able to be an American made company. That's, that's why it, it appealed to us to do this podcast with you too. I, I love the fact that you're doing American made stuff. Oh, thank you. Um, and you know, I, I have to tell you the reason why I absolutely love that. So in Virginia city, uh, up in Nevada, it is an old west, uh, old west town that never dies, and it's over a mining. It, it it will blow your mind if you've never been. It looks like a snapshot out of the old and west. Everybody <laughs> in the town that lives there wears old west clothing all the time. People still ride around on donkeys. Oh yeah, and... <laughs> it's just so crazy. No way. But all of the gift shops, because it's a tourist trap now. Every single gift shop has items for sale and they'll have holsters in there leather holsters and they all are stamped made in china and it yeah. just i got so offended the first time <laughs> i saw that i was like how can you have this wonderful american-made town and you say it survived through the times but then you can't buy anything that was made in the usa in this town you know finding things made in the usa is is not as easy as people think you know and and yes people may you know, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to imprint this pen in the USA, but the pen came from China or right. Tokyo right. or Indonesia or something like that. And that kind of loses the whole 100% made in America. Yeah. There's, there's a, uh, so here, I'll, I'll give you an example. So this buckle, this is our clip corner buckles that come standard with all of our holsters. You can't buy these in the U.S. They're, they don't exist. Really? So, yeah. So um, we tried to do research. Con mm -hmm. A lot of contracts are the same way. So this buckle obviously is made in China. And I can get them for pennies on the dollar and buy them by the thousand. If I say, nope, I'm not going to order from China. These one buckles, I'm going to buy them here in the U.S. Um, they're eight seventy five a buckle. And it's the same buckle that comes from China. They just get upsold. So it's very hard to be 100%. Um, screws for instance you know where you you go yeah. to tandy leather and buy something from tandy leather and everything in there is made in china you know yeah. all the leather tools and so we have like very keen tools and a lot of other tools that we use but i mean it's just so the company and everything is built and everything comes from here except for our buckles um okay. Well, you can't get you, know, you have to give somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. I mean, even the leather comes from America. I think Kermit Oak is out of Missouri. Uh, Pen 
Pennsylvania, no, maybe. I'm, somewhere. Yeah, but anyways, they're yeah. they're an American made company as well. So even our leather comes from and, and you know, <laughs> part of part of what we we pride ourselves with on the American made <laughs> part is um, we don't outsource anything. So everything that we make is hand molded. We don't press mold anything. It's all done by hand. My hands are going to be hurting by the time I'm older. I'm going to have severe arthritis, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, everything that we make is hand molded. I mean, it's hand, well, not hand, mach machine stitched, but you, right. you get the concept. I mean, all of it comes from us and genuinely from us. There's not a piece of leather out of there that hasn't touched all like hit the yeah. hands of our employees. It's just, that's the kind of the American made part that we like to pride ourselves on. Yeah, Not exactly. necessarily, you know, we don't send a holster out to Mexico just for them to send right. it back to us. So we can sell it or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. So if you guys had to pick three of your personal favorites, if there was if somebody said to you, you guys can only pick three products. That's it. What three would you pick? Three favorite. for him and three for me. <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's do your personal favorites. Um, okay, so for me personally, my three favorite products. So I kind of have like two products and then and then a concept. So our PS6MR is probably one of my favorite products. I actually have one. This one's mine. Um, but it's it's our full face stingray. So this is my personal carry holster. And the reason why it's it's one of my favorite products is because being a woman, I have tried most all of our products to figure out which one is going to work for my body type the best. So with the PS6MR, I personally love it because I feel like I can talk to women about it the most and I can explain to them why this is the holster that they should get. Um, and it's, it's our medium ride holster. It has a sweat shield. So it's comfortable. Your gun's not going to rub up on your skin or anything like that. So it's really just one of those things that I just have a personal relationship with that holster and it makes it one of my favorites. You know, that's a very good point because, um, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bigger girl, you know, and for me to try and carry on my side one, I have to be wearing like something really loose or else it sticks out like a sore thumb. And it is just so dang uncomfortable, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So like, that's, that's probably one of my like favorite things is I love to talk to women and try to figure out, you know, especially for their body types, trying to um, figure out which one is going to be the most comfortable. As far as concealed carry goes, you know, I know the most about our concealed carry line, I would say amongst anyone, but <laughs> um, it just makes it so much easier for me, especially because I wear them that I can explain them. But that's, that's probably why that one. I also really like our PS6 SA. Um, which is our single action concealed carry holster. We kind of, um, we have one here. We, we really like the concept of if it's what you're comfortable <laughs> with. On that. That's, that's my third part that I love is the carving. That's like my favorite part of the company is carved or hand painted holsters. You know, people who are going to listen to this on a podcast, unfortunately can't see this. So they definitely have to go to your website, but the detail work on that, it looks like it's carved out. It's got flowers and it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's our, well. our carver is a multi world champion that travels the world teaching carving. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and, you know, it's uh, there's something about saying that he owns a holster company, he makes holsters, but he's a really good friend of mine. And so I wanted my leather work to emulate his carving and so i spoke to him and he instantly instantly was like yes i would love to be your carver wow. and that says monuments for the industry that we work in because there's not a lot of people that are going to want to help you grow or compete right. with their own company right yeah but the, the ps6 go ahead no i just i just saying that you know i was listening to a uh, podcast earlier today with uh, Gary V. I don't know if you listen to Gary V at all. You know, he was saying that same thing is that people are so afraid of competition. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid of competition. Well, we welcome it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, one, it helps, you know, you keep you know, up your game all the time, but you learn from each other. Yeah. Right. Just, there, there's, there's so much room for success with everybody. If everybody just played nice together like that. That's why the gun industry in general is an incredible industry to be in because if you go to, you know, like shot show, for instance, is the, is the trade show of the gun 
world basically Uh and when you go there everybody helps everybody everybody is just trying to look how to not only better their own company but to better everybody else's company as well you're constantly trying to lift each other up and you know benefit from each other and it's just it's a great industry to be a part of so cliff tell me what is your three favorites you can only pick three things to keep what is it going to be okay so, so this is my first one. This one, um, now I had this one laser engraved um, from a unit that I served with in Iraq. Um, but uh, this is our PS6 high rise. And the most unique thing about this holster is, is this flap right here on the back. Okay. So you see it's got like a little lip. Uh-huh. So 100%. And if you ever talk to anybody about holsters or if they come to you and talk to you after they see this podcast, the problem with most all holsters is that the weight is in the back. Um, and the pistol grip, because that's where the ammunition is. And so the holster will have a tendency to tip out on you. Right. Because all the weights there, especially like a full size 1911 or whatever. This holster, and, and this holster is actually used by many Texas Rangers and all the local sheriffs are getting these from us now because they absolutely love them. But when you put your belt through here, this piece goes behind your belt. And what that does is it sucks the top of the gun into your body. And then oh. it stays. So if you can imagine this being your your back, your hip line, instead of it sitting like this now, it sits like this, and it doesn't move and it doesn't shake. So you can run and do stuff, and it doesn't it doesn't do this. That is fantastic. That is brilliant. It, it's very unique design, and and there's not a single law enforcement officer I've ever talked to that I sat down and showed him this holster and he didn't buy one. Wow. Um, so that. What's that? That's fantastic. Oh that's, yeah. That's yeah. Great. I absolutely love it. And then my next favorite, well, obviously the thin blue line, I, I have, that's part of my heart and soul into the thin blue line. Um, but this one means more to me than anything else. So, and this is kind of funny, but this is our SAS starter kit. Um, this is just the holsters that comes with it and it comes with um, a badge. So the single action shooting society is what brought us together as a family and started our new venture in this business. So I have a lot of love for SAS. Um, Having five shooters in my family, I knew the struggle of finding holsters for everybody in the family. We're always having to trade holsters out, you know, because you can't afford to spend seven, eight hundred dollars on a brand new set of holsters for each individual starting out. And then you have granddad out there that wants his grandson to start shooting, but the grandson may not stay with it. And you don't want to be out a fortune for somebody that doesn't want to stay in it. So I developed these. This is something me and Haley had been working on for years. Um, but these are our CA55 holsters on our website. But we've taken all the frills off of them. And all you get is just this. I don't know if you can see like the little gunfighter print that's in there. Yep, yep. So this is a standard. Um, they're, they're hard. They're double lined. They're, they're perfect. Um, and they're $2.99 for a belt, the holsters, the Shop it's the whole side. thing. It's everything you need as a beginner to start shooting. Okay. And, and it'll last just as long as any of our other holsters. So the reason that's my favorite is because I am, SAS saved me and Haley. SAS saved our relationship. And so anything I can do to get young people into a sport where they're spending time with their parents, I am 100% on board. And I think the SAS, SAS starter kit allows that to happen. Yeah, you know, things have just changed so much, you know, from, I mean, I grew up, you know, in the, in the seventies and eighties, you know, and, and things were so different back then, you know, we weren't addicted to our, our technology, you know, we weren't right. played and I grew up shooting guns, you know, yeah. my dad, you know, had the shotguns and pistols and stuff. And we had property in Northern Michigan and, you know, we'd go up there and target practice and stuff like that. And then in my adult years, I kind of got away from it. And just in the last year, um, my husband and actually my oldest daughter and I, we all went and got our concealed carry permit and, you know, we all carry now. So it's just, you know, yeah, to be able to go out, like my daughter and I will, we'll go out target practice together, you know, and, and it is, it's just things like that. We need to get back to things like that Yeah, you yeah. Know, in, in our country as a whole. And I think things would start to, you know, to turn around a little bit, right. you know, it's, it's getting back to the, the core values. Of, of family and as us as Americans that's really well, we always talk that we hope that this COVID thing allows when it's over people are like oh my god I've been trapped inside for so long I'm never doing that again like, all those opportunities that I 
I never went to the world championships to shoot because it was too far or whatever. And I'm hoping people, people are being are reset and they're going to take advantage of being outside and doing things again that they being around family because yeah. now we know what it's like to not be able to be around family. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So to close this out, I always ask everybody and you guys can both pick your own. What is an inspirational quote? What is something that inspires you? Is there, is there a famous quote or something that you like? For me, um, on the, I don't have a picture of it, but behind my desk, I have a huge painting um, and it has two wolves, a uh, Howlin' Wolf. So in Sass, I'm Howlin' Wolf and she's Diamond Blaze. And that's how most people know us. And that's how the logo, uh, the, wolf on the, logo. the wolf on the logo. So I used to uh, uh, used to own Myrna, or, uh, Howlin' Wolf leather. And then uh -huh. when we bought Marnico, we merged the two. But I wanted to keep the Marnacle tank name. So what we did was just put the wolf in the center of the Marnacle holsters piece. And wow. so that's how we married the companies up. Um, but behind my desk, there's this huge painting of these two wolves snuggling. And it says, you and me, we got this. And I see it every morning. And and that is, to me, it, it makes my day okay. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter if COVID shuts us down or we lose nine power poles on the property for electricity weight from the the ice storms, it doesn't matter. I can look at that and I'm like, you know what? We do got this. Nothing's yeah. that bad. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Haley, what about you? Um, so for me, I guess, I don't know, inspirational quotes are so hard for me sometimes. Um, but I think that one that I would pick um, is if at first you don't succeed, try again. Um, mainly because I don't like to see people give up. Um, if we would have given up when things got hard with the company or when the pandemic hit or anything, then, you know, we wouldn't be as successful and running towards our goals as we do now. So I think that's probably the biggest thing. And like what I would tell anybody was just, you know, never give up. It's yeah, just, exactly. You know, and, and you can't, you know, as parents, as children, you know, you, you're riding your bike, you fall off the bike. You don't say, oh, okay, you know, well, you're not going to do that. No, you get back up and you try it again. You know, yeah, keep, yeah. You just have to, you just got to keep going. Well, yeah. just like the name of your podcast, My Cup of America. It's hard right now for everybody. Yeah. But what are we going to do? We're just going to get back up and try it again. That's what yeah. we do. That's how this country survives. Yep. Yeah, that's what we do as Americans. We just get up, we go, you know, and, and we just keep on going. So, so you guys tell me, where can people find you? <laughs> <laughs> um so we have our website um radicalholsters.com um that's probably the best way to find us and then you know we're located in pampa texas we love when people come out and visit us at the shop um we also have a range um we have a sas club on our on our property so people can come out and shoot and um just kind of see us that way as yeah, well yeah we, one of the things that my dream was that once we got the company established in Texas, I wanted to build a range. This was my five-year plan. Uh -huh. And I wanted to build a range. And so if somebody came out and picked up their $3,000 fully custom diamond gem rig, I could take them out back and let them shoot out of it. You know, I just yeah. thought it'd be fun. Well, we now have a full cowboy club with seven <laughs> cowboy bays shooting range. And so it grew quickly. We haven't even been here a year yet. Uh, but our website um our and then we facebook have, and instagram yeah marnica holsters okay and then our what's our 1-800 number it's 1-800-497-3166 and we love to talk to people on the phone too <laughs> great well i'm gonna um, make sure that that all is included um at the bottom of this video and then everything that we share it'll be in the podcast notes so cliff and haley thank you so much for taking time to share with us and our listeners and our viewers I think this is absolutely amazing. And my plan is to get to Texas this year. So um, when I do, you can guarantee we're going to come see you. So. Yes, definitely. Thank, yes, you so welcome. thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you guys. We'll chat soon. Okay. All right. Bye. bye. bye.